Yeah, don't let his face mask fool you. That's Kevin. No, no, no. Oh, come on now. <laughs> told my saw. He's gonna out me. He's trying to hide. He's trying to hide. After he told I figure people wouldn't recognize me anymore. Now you gotta put me out there. <laughs> no, no. I figure you could just be I'm, like, I'm yeah, Kevin's him. no longer with us. And yeah, after he told my saw, we had to cut like this Kevin part out and just pretend this, like I'm a new guy. Now I got this Lego man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Guilty of Trees at Eastside Tree Works. We've got this sketchy cedar to do today. So it's a big tree, western red cedar, 65 inches in diameter. And the customer heard a sound, a creaking sound, like a door hinging Sunday. Came outside, you can see there's a big crack up there. And that thing was, you know, squeak, squeak, just prying apart like that. And she thought this thing was going to fall apart all over. They've got the play set and chicken coop. They got goats and stuff running around in here. So. So she called us, we're out here. This is the afternoon, it's kind of an emergency deal, so we're not gonna get the whole tree done today, but we're gonna try to go up there and get it secured so that this thing doesn't fall apart and destroy everything, you know, all over the place. It's a huge tree, you can hear the rooster there. So yeah, we wanna try to stay for animals. They're putting away their, their goats and chickens right now. The guys are setting up the crane in the driveway, and yeah, we're gonna get right after it. And you know, trees like this you really want to watch out if you got a tree like this in your yard you got to look for those really tight unions you know when it's like a tight v like that you want a nice u shape if you've got multiple tops in your tree you know that way the tree has time to to grow and you know when you got those really tight unions you get sediment in there and I'll, I'll talk about that more when i'm up there a little bit but you know classic case of included bark it can ruin even a really nice hardwooded tree like a western red cedar the wood's actually not super hard but they're I don't, I don't know why, but they're super hardy trees, and this is like one of the only things that I ever see that ruins these trees, and it'll ruin any tree no matter how, no matter how strong a wood it is. So we'll, we're going to get the crane set up. I'm going to go up there, tie this thing up, and um, yeah, we'll get started. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, and she, <laughs> she's going to be glad it's out of here for sure. Okay. So this is our drop zone. We gotta try to land everything in here. It's really not a very great drop zone. We got plants and stuff all over the place. So this will help. We might have to take this in kind of small pieces because we don't want to destroy all their landscaping, you know? But we've had worse. Yeah, super tight. Super. The, the trucks are like eight feet wide. Not a lot of room to back in here. You want him to paint a tooth on his? Yeah. After it gets all weathered, you know, a really after nice bright white tooth. <laughs> after ma many like, years of abuse, we'll we'll get the tooth on there. Like trailer park Legos. So Jake, yeah. I'm gonna fly you up. We're gonna boom way up. You'll take this cedar top out real quick. Okay. And then we'll fly over the tree in question. in that cedar right there Brian can't boom down quite far enough so I'm gonna go take take some material wow look at that lake Jeez. holy smokes so anyways that cedar was topped a long time ago it's got a bunch of octopus type you know tops coming out one of them is in our way to boom down sufficiently so I'm gonna so I'm gonna go down and buzz one of these off. Okay, cable down. Keep cabling down. Keep on cabling down. Okay, good. Hold on. Hold 
think I'm just gonna cut this and let it fall, Brian. Hopefully do. It's pretty small, just yeah, just stay there for a minute. Okay, We have guys on the ground. I'll be careful of the roadies. <laughs> all that build up for that little thing. What? That wasn't that much build up? What, what, what do you mean all that build up? <laughs> that was a normal amount of build up. Are you going to drop more? Yeah, I'm going to drop more. Headache! Oh my gosh, that was really close, Jake. Thank you. But close doesn't <laughs> count, all right? Ugh. All right. Let's go. Let's go cut that cedar down, a big one. All right. All right, Jake, are you over anything? Yeah, dude, can you boom right? Boom right. Hold it. Okay. Oh, man, it would look so much cooler with the tooth painted on there. I don't know why you don't, <laughs> why you, and some eyeballs, like two. No, you can't really do anything there, but you could do a tooth. <laughs> okay. Just two. Because you only have one, it's really easy to brush, you know? I'm good for six grand out there. You're good for six grand over here? Yep, yep. Okay. All right, Brian, cinch that up. Cable up. Good. I guess, you, oh man. I might have to You're right boom there, that huh? Pressure up, boss. Yeah, just boom it up, whatever. There we go. I mean, it's already goofy. Just take it to the next level. Take it, take it one step further. All right, rope out. Cut some stuff out of my face. I'm unclipping from the crane, Brian. This is gonna be a top. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna cut the top first, Scott. Nice. Is that a good idea? I don't know about that. You should just go to where it's broken. It's the easiest. <laughs> it's the easiest for me that way. If we could glue it. If we could what? Glue it? Yeah. And then put a band around it, tighten it up. Okay, hey, there you go. Okay, so I want to get weight off these stems that are prying apart from each other. And so if I cut the tops off, that'll be a lot less force put on that union before I tie it up. You ready, Brian? Ready, ready. Okay, and the crane's a little further away, so I'm gonna just do a face cut. It'll just be a little... I don't know why, I just feel like Face cut out. It probably weighs two grand, maybe. Do this slowly. There we go. You break? Yep. Go ahead and boom up. Smooth as ice. Okay, oh, smooth. Nice job. All right, buddy. Yeah. Oh, so, because I knew the piece was going to tip towards the crane, but I didn't know how much, I just did a face cut. A shelf cut probably would have sufficed, but, you know, 
I don't, it's, it's hard to explain sometimes. It's just, I, I think to myself, maybe a face cut would just be a better idea here because that way it allows for a give if there's quite a bit of movement for it to settle into. It, it worked out fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this thing down. I'm gonna limb it up a little bit. We'll take the limbs, put them in, and then we'll hook up the piece, bring it in the chipper. For more, are you? Well, why don't you pick me up and let's pluck in the top out of the other side? Go ahead and cable down. Okay, good. Hold it. I'm just wondering if they saw that. Saw what we just did? Okay, cable up. Yeah. I'm like a five man tag team did on Did you see how little... small we made that top? Yeah, but this is Charles' first day, you know? He's, uh, he's still a pup. Okay, good. Boom left. Boom left, Brian. Okay, boom down. But I don't want to get outworked by everybody. At least gotta be middle of the pack or the hardest. There it is. Okay, right hold now. it. Hold yeah, it. Just boom don't be right. last place, right? <laughs> <laughs> And the person who lasts always gets eaten by the bear. Okay, good. Hold it. Okay, Brian, you're on. You can cable up. Okay. All right, Brian, you ready? Yep. Three. You boom up. There we go. Yep. All right. All right. So, do we have any of those 44 foot slings? Can I just get one of those on the ball next? I mean, do you guys, what do you want to do? Do you want to do another pick? Yeah, let's keep Some it going. More picks? Let's just Let's do as much plugging. as we can. This is our day. All right, Brian, cable down from there. You want me to you want me yeah. to long jake this stuff, or do you want to just do it like this? Let's just do it like that. Yeah. We'll do six. Can we chip the next turn? No. Okay, so we'll just. But you got a lot of guys, though. Yeah. So we've got a bit of time left in the day. We'll do a couple more logs off this thing before we call it a day. Yep. Nice and smooth. Show, show them how it's done. I'm gonna give you my saw, Brian. What's that? Does this mess up the chipper if they go in there? No, rocks do not go in there. Okay, That's Brian, you take her away. Break lightly at first, or just get everything to the center. 
and you fit sift through it, okay. right? So like all this stuff, you just go like this. Boom. My 46, or Scott's 46, if it's closer, and he'll let me use it. Oh uh, yeah. It's close. I think it's, it's here. Nice. It's shiny. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. Cable down a little bit. Okay, good. Good. Okay, cable up. I did have fun at the party though. I'm glad everybody came out and had a good time. And did you did you get to go down the slip and slide, Jake? Yeah. I went down it. Went down I went it. down on the, the boogie board thing once. Yeah. I think I might have went down twice. Oh, sweet. Well, Kevin did it. It just looks so fun, you know? I need to get it swinging that, um, what I is it, that chestnut? It. All right, go ahead and cinch that up, Brian. Okay, got my cow hitch yeah. tied up That's there. So we had a big bouncy house, too. Big this thing house. was, like, the size of my kitchen dining room. How long room. did you have the bouncy house? When, how long did you have four to hours. give the bouncy house back? Oh, we you had it for four Six hours? Six o'clock is when they came and picked it up. Did you have to pay oh, the drying fee? Okay. Oh, yeah, but th there was a puddle in the, the bouncy house and it was like, because the fans were blowing, yeah. it was blowing the air through the water and they had the cleaner on it, which was like a simple green, so there was just bubbles everywhere. That's what that so, was, I thought they put the bubbles in there for fun. <laughs> Those were toxic bubbles. Green. Simple green's all organic, man. Is that, you could that's drink that. Like, <laughs> simple green? I don't yeah. know if that's true, I feel like that's a lot. Yeah, who told? Did the bouncy house guy tell you that? Yeah, I don't know if that's no true. Hey, he said, you, he a, said a drying fee on a. Children lick the sides of this all the time. <laughs> yeah, you ever heard of a kid dying from licking a bouncy house? All right, Brian, this probably weighs 2,500 pounds, maybe, maybe three grand. All right, Brian, you ready? Okay, Brian, can you cable up? Good. Yeah, just cable up. What's that, Brian? Yeah, you're good. So you're getting the weight out of the, these things. These things are way, way less likely to break now. You know, you think about how much weight it's holding at an angle, you know, and as you reduce the size of it, a lot less stress on the unions down there. I'm surprised that it was just cracking apart like that. It didn't just fail. Cedar's a weird wood, this Western Red Cedar. It's not a true cedar, but it's very, very light and just super strong. It's a really interesting type of wood. They, they very rarely fail in people's yards. It seems like Sometimes maybe a top will bust out or a union like the one down there will break. But they've, you know, they've got that nice flare at the bottom. They very rarely uproot. They're, even if the branches break, they seem to just get hung up. They don't even fall to the ground usually. So they're, they're really nice trees. Those are all Western Red Cedars over there. They smell great too. Brian, I'll probably have you pick me up and then I'll just leapfrog to the other top and I'll I'll take a piece off of that one so the limbs aren't so tangled up on the way out. Okay, so question of the day. Trek 250 rider says, 
How long do the blades on the chipper last? Well, it depends on what you're chipping, really. You know, this crew, we're using a lot of heavy equipment, and a lot of times we're using the excavator and stuff. You know, maybe the, the blades are only lasting. Yeah, they'll probably last, what do you think, Scott? Like a month or something, usually? Uh, I would say, if you keep rocks out of it, then you'll, you'll get over a month of use on them. Yeah, you'll get about a month of use out of it if you try to your best to keep rocks out of it. Of course, they, they can last a super long time if you're really careful and prudent about what you're putting into the chipper, but inevitably, the bigger the material gets, the more it's picking up dirt, you know, and heavy equipment just makes it all that much worse trying to chip it with the excavator and stuff. So we uh, we send them in somewhere to get sharpened. I, I'm not sure who does that, but we give the, the dull blades to Curtis, our general manager, and he takes them somewhere and, and they just sharpen them up Actually, for us. Actually, correction but, uh, on that. We, uh, we get, yeah, we get brand new blades all the time now because we don't want to have to adjust the anvil all the time. Okay, correction on that. Now I guess we're just buying new blades all the time because as we were sharpening them, the anvil, the bottom plate of the chipper was, you know, getting further and further apart, making bigger and bigger chips. So now we just buy new blades regularly, and that keeps the chips really small. So I didn't, I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, cable down. Perfect shot, buddy. Okay, hold it. Yep. Okay, cable up. Yeah, zoom up and to the right. I think it's free. Might have like a sliver in there left. There you go. What a hairy pick. Yikes. Man. Wow, dude, those limbs are so long. I think I just saw a rat. I did. There's a rat. All right, sticky is in the bag. So I just got to make sure I'm trying to get Brian as close to the center of this pick as possible when he comes down. And then I tie into the ball because it's easier than trying to, you know, repel down the stick through all that stuff. So that's really messy. So, okay, keep cabling up. Got to get some of this fuzzy stuff off. This is a Silky Sugoi 360. I like the curved blade for when I'm in the tree because it cuts faster, but if I'm doing fine pruning, I'll use a straight blade handsaw. I use a Tsurugi, it's called. They're both made by Silky. Silky's kind of the, the industry leader when it comes to handsaws.
Yeah, go ahead, Brian, and just slowly cube boom right a little bit. And right. Like putting my hand up, like <laughs> like if you dropped it, I'd do anything. <laughs> Oh man, Gary, jeez, whoo, okay, yeah, dude, look at that mess, oh, holy smokes, man, this tree's huge, can somebody tie on that 44 foot sling, I'll just, I'll just tie this on just as a courtesy, I'm just gonna leave this up here, so I'll just save it. Couple minutes tomorrow, we'll have to pull this out. Be ready to go once we get up here. Just gonna use one of these crane slings to tie these two stems together. To be extra safe. Um, ran through the eye right there, and then I'm gonna tie a cow hitch right here. Same knot I do for all the cream picks. Yeah, and I highly doubt either one of these would break overnight. We're coming back in the morning. But, you know, just peace of mind so I can tell the customer, you know, there's really no, no doubt, you know, whatsoever. Now these are tied together. Yeah, you can see all this included bark right there. It's really nasty to get that big crack. What happens is with these tight unions like this, you know, sediment gets in there, water gets in there, it freezes, it expands, it cracks these. These each blow in the wind and pry each other apart over time. And this stem can't really put on wood over here, and this one can't put on wood over here. They can only grow in this direction because they're buttressed up together right there. So you just end up with compounding problems over the years. With unions like that, you can see it really splitting apart. It runs all the way down here. Probably 10 feet or so. A fracture right there. So, this is inevitably gonna fail. So, good thing, good thing they noticed and the good thing they called us. I didn't squish all their other property. All right, we're done for the day. It's getting late, everybody's got places to be. Frustrating the uh, the goat playground. So taking this wood and and spreading out into the goat paradise here. Oh, so I get a little say so in how we orchestrate that. I'm excited about it. <laughs> I've the never goats to like play on the logs or something. Is that yeah, they want to do a little playground for the for the goats. Oh, so I'm really excited about that. It'll be my first goat playground first experience with architecture yeah like really setting up a nice little play structure for these uh therapeutic goats you think i put the smaller one right there are they therapeutic goats is that Thera they yeah this is a therapy school for, for oh. children and and goats and, oh. and and yeah it's really interesting and huh i'm excited i really create the goat playground yeah of their dreams yeah. maybe create like a stair effect and Maybe they can jump off one of the stumps into the trampoline. It'll probably be a water feature. I mean, if they could jump through a waterfall. Cascading waterfall that, that they can idea. walk under. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're gonna put the logs here and there throughout that area for the goats to play on. And the, the, the customer has bestowed this task on Kevin to orchestrate. The We're playground. gonna work together. It's gonna be a team effort in oh, yeah. creating this goat paradise. <laughs> so, so she's the lead designer. You're just like a secretary. I'm just so. making dreams come true. So you're really like second. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we're going to get it done together, you know? <laughs> so, so Brian's doing the lifting and she's deciding where they go. And I'm getting <laughs> them super. You're getting those together. I'm putting those things together. You should just put your helmet so on her. <laughs> Brian, me, and her, we're going to so, get those logs where they so, need to go. So we're just using your helmet. That's, that's what you're bringing to the table is your hey. intercom. I, I say when to boom down, I say when to cable down, boom left, boom right, so I'm pretty crucial in this. We can put your helmet on the customer, maybe. 
<laughs> so just cut me out completely. <laughs> I just go home now. <laughs> no, well, she'll actually no, that's not true because she'll be telling Brian, you know, she, she won't know the proper vernacular, you know. Yeah, it's very complicated what I do. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> cable up, cable down, boom left, boom right. She's gonna give him the thumbs up, and then he's gonna start booming up, and it's just gonna be a mess. Next thing you know, there's gonna be a <laughs> goats flying. Goats flying through the air. You can't yeah, have you're that. right. All right, we're back day two. Just a few more picks on this bad boy, and then we're out of here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun day. We're almost done here. I just gotta go down and grab. I left my saw up here yesterday. Gonna go grab my saw, come back up, and just keep on going. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, Brian, cable me up to the top. Yeah. Okay, good. The backpack is really nice for keeping all of my rope nice and consolidated when I'm trying to zigzag through the canopy. And then I always take it off my back right before I make my first cut. So I'll rappel it down a little bit and then I'll take it off. I think the backpack is really essential for crane work. Otherwise your rope gets super tangled up. I got 120 feet in my bag and uh, you know, that's good for most applications. <laughs> You're free. Go ahead and boom it up. <laughs> Look how long these limbs are. Wow, shnikes. Oh my goodness. Ah. Yeah, buddy. Look at that big wad of, wow. The trees like this when I got lots of limbs on them, you know, I, I, I treat these a lot differently because I'm pretty close to the crane and we got lots of chart, lots of lifting capacity, you know, I'll strap this up when I'm cutting it because the limbs are so weird, it might move a lot. And if I were like very, very far away from the crane, I'd be very apprehensive to do that because the movement is what really fries on the boom. And you know, cranes usually tip over from lots of, lots of quick movement, you know, shock loading the boom. So if I were far away from the crane, I'd probably take the limbs off first and do the trunk separate so I could get as little movement as possible. Here, we have a lot of chart. If it moves a bit, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I'm also, also the rule of thumb is crane work, you know, if you're good for 6,000 pounds, try to stay around 3,000 pounds, and that's what I'm doing here. So Brian's good for about six grand, and I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing, uh, I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing what I think he'll be able to lift, but trying to stay in that 50% capacity range, because you want a lot of room for air. A lot of times we see pictures of cranes tipped over, there's a tree attached to the end of it. And a lot of crane guys hate doing tree work because, you know, if you're putting an AC unit on top of a building or something, first of all, you know what it weighs. Second of all, it's too heavy, you just put it right down. Here, you know, we're cutting the piece and we're totally committed to it. So once we're holding it, we just have to hope that we really, that we really calculated it prudently. And so, you know, really important that you stay in that tolerance. So, like I said, I treat it a lot differently if I'm close to the crane than if I'm far. Once you get far away, you know, a little bit of movement does a lot more to the to the crane. You can feel a lot more when you're running it. So, you know, keep that in mind. If the tree's far away or if it's close, you'll, you'll approach it much different when you work with the crane. So, this is going really great. You got loads of capacity. Cedar naturally is a very light wood. You know, it's 
it's one of the only species I know of that's this light and this strong. You know, I don't really understand that, but great, great trees. Yeah, we're just having, we're just having a ball out here. Go paradise. Put logs down once or twice. Living in a go paradise. Well, I mean, shouldn't she be out here orchestrating this? Yeah, I have no idea what her goat's like. Well, I, I know a little something about goats. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, they like... What a climbing. relief. <laughs> they like climbing on things. They like horsing around. They like jumping around. Hey, but they're goats. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> goats, goats horsing around. Yeah. Well, we could put one like right here and then we can cut a notch out of this and then stick another one right on top and do like a something like that I think what we're gonna do is stump. okay brian we're just gonna let this do its thing for a second about start like a start booming down stepping down yeah, just to get it to spin for us. All right, cable down. Cable down. All right, there we go. Man, it's such a beautiful lake. I got your saw, Kevin. I'm, I am gonna doll this saw. <laughs> go my saw. Cable up. Oh wait, no wait, 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 wait. Hold on, cable down. Use the 80. We're not laying pipe. We're laying some pipe today, <laughs> fellas. We got the 88. <laughs> no. I am not starting that up. Okay, where do we want to go here? I'm thinking like right here. I want to I want to walk you do a little uh, walk you through this a little bit. Like, just close your eyes and imagine the vision here. We're talking about a four foot stump, and then trying to get another piece right here to walk it down a little bit so they come up on the rocks, jump jump and maybe do something over here but then they got a little little area down here to mess around with too but that's kind of like the, the the waterfall feature right there is right there okay but what is, let's let's wait in cutting then okay sometimes if the stick is sufficiently large i'll stand or sit up here just because it's a little easier on the feet rather than standing on the spurs for a long time but I, I always tie, you know, I'm tied in, so it's really not as, it's not as scary as it looks. Um, right, yeah, I'm, I'm tied in the stick. It's just a little easier to hang out like this. Oh, hey. You see me? Oh, I see you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Can you see me, Brian? I can, I can kind of see your, your, yeah, your it's like, it's like couldn't be any more perfect. Nice. Okay, hold it, Brian. Yep. Okay. Cable down. I wonder if I can, uh, maybe I can. Oh, dude, I used my carabiner. I just suck it in the hole and then I could print it better. It should work pretty good. I always keep the threaded part of the pin on that side. Otherwise, this will dig into the trunk. I don't know if you can see that. Always make sure the threaded part is on this side so that the pin isn't digging into the trunk.
you're free. Okay. a notch in the other tree we're gonna to try to rest that one into the other tree that we just put down and then the notch will keep the we're, we're linking it's like linking logs but that way or this way a little seesaw like this way yeah like connecting to it would go right here and lay it from here to here well it kind of takes away from that platform well you gotta you gotta build it up anyway because this is like a step down for them and then a step up. So if you put a log here and walk it up, you like pop up on this and then <laughs> just imagine the goat. <laughs> like maybe I should, like, maybe we should bring a goat out here and see what, mm. you know, the possibilities That's a good are. idea. Just see Where's what the options. Goats? <laughs> Let's get the goats out here. <laughs> Let's see if I could uh, <laughs> kick up some dirt with this one. Dude, that was pretty good idea with the notch. I like that. I like the notch. I really know what they like. This next one, it's pretty short and stubby. It should be a little lighter than the last one. You ready, Brad? up and then boom to the right you can just boom right to the right right now nice all right we're all brushed out it looks like it's closed a little bit since we took all that weight off of it like I can still see the crack but it's less prominent now I think it could be in my head but I, I really think it's closed a little bit
double shirt. So when I pick this, I'm gonna put two slings on it and it's gonna kind of squeeze them together and it might crack. Mm -hmm. You know, it might shift a little bit, so I want to be just as safe as I possibly can. So that's why I just take the extra second to put those little humbles in there so the slings can grab a little bit better. You know, because I don't want the slings sliding up at all. I want this to be as smooth as possible, and I really want to hold that together as best as possible. Okay, hold it. Okay, down one more. Good. You need a mount on your hard hat. You need a mount. I was thinking like getting like a yellow one would be cool, like so it looks like a little Lego, like. Well, I would, you want to take over? Do I? Wearing this, yeah. I don't have a mount. That's what I'm saying, you need a mount. There's, there's mounts over there in the box. I don't know how ridiculous I look until I see myself like on camera or like <laughs> in a reflection of a mirror and I'm like, what? I'm like, what? <laughs> I just take a double take of myself. I, I think it's really, hearing your voice on audio I think it's a great purchase. I didn't pay really that much more for it. I had to get it from Germany though. I want an angry face. I think they make a skull. <laughs> they got like a, a skull face that you can get. Okay, I'll take that saw. Actually, you, know what I, you know what I can do? I can, I can actually just use the very tail end of this. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> using my, well, my whole flip line, not even using my cam. Give me a little bit more. I know. All right, you ready, Brian? I really think I'm gonna end up needing wedges. What I'm standing on is crack is crackling. Well, I don't really think so, but I'm not used to standing in a cedar and feeling it pop and crack when I'm cutting it underneath below my feet, you know. I I don't really think I think I'm just overthinking it. I think I, if I just put tension in my rope, in my climbing line, I I think I'm just being a baby. Cause it's uh I think it's fine. Guys, it's tedious. All right, 
I, I need wedges. Just throw wedges at them. Yeah, just toss me, yeah. Okay, and then I'll take the axe. Yep. Thank you. See, if it were one piece, I'd just be able to cut straight through, but because it's two pieces, now it's pinching on my bar. Now it's, okay, so that relieved pressure. Now I can keep going. So it's a clean cut all the way through. Okay, Brian, boom up slowly. Yeah, boom up. You're not gonna be under that. Wow, dude. <laughs> Look at that fracture. Okay, keep booming up, Brian. Please don't put that over my head. Okay, I think you're good. Hang out and I think you can start swinging over. Dude, that is so nasty in here. Holy smokes, that crack goes so far. Wow. Look at all that. That's that included bark right there, that fracture. Crazy, it's just crumbling apart in here. Wow, that is a sketchy, look at this crack. Dude, this crack travels all the way through. Look at, there's like a big chasm. It's nuts. What's that way, Brian? Okay. 5,400 pounds. Hey, can you come down a little bit? Blow this sawdust. Just get right over the log and boot and uh, and uh, fly down a little bit, and you'll see the sawdust flying off. Go forward. Forward. Yeah, now fly straight down, and you'll see the sawdust flying off. Might be a cool shot. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool. That's nuts, man. Nice air conditioning. All right. Oh, nice. Laying down. 5,400 pounds, so. Still 600 pounds. Could have went 600 pounds bigger. How are we doing up front? Are we all cleaned up by the chipper and everything? What's that? Are we all cleaned up by the chipper, do you know? Yeah. I'll okay, so we're that. all pretty much caught up. Yeah.
do one. Just, yeah. So we're not trying to lift it. We're just trying to lift it a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm through. Ryan, can you boom up? You're holding on by this thing. That's nothing, man. It, we could probably break that with wedges. Yeah, just take the saw out, Kevin. Yeah, I'll put like some more. I think we are. I'll just put some more wedges in it. If there's any weird kerf in there, wedging it'll probably break it. So. Yeah, I see this thing starting to slide sideways, so that should be an indicator that we're through. Brian, we're, we're through. Just boom up. Dude, we're floating. We're floating now. Yeah, we're floating. We're floating. Ooh. Ooh. Left. Ooh. That's a heavy piece. Oh, really? Oh, shit. That was a little too heavy. Okay. Well, let's just get it on the ground. If you can boom left. No, get it. Get all the weight off the stump before you boom left. See, this is gonna. Yeah. We're on the ground. Alright, we're on the ground. Okay. And this on top of it, maybe? Cable up. Cable up. Cable up. Yes. Yeah, that works. Cable that down. Yeah, so if you've got if you've got one sling on it. It'll go on the backside. It's a lot easier to lay the logs down. Two slings add security and stability. Makes it a lot harder to lay down, especially when it's fat and kind of short like this. So the slant on the front, let, let it have room to close. And we have stuff stuffed under the backside. So hopefully I'll tip this thing over. We want to lay it down. All the wet. These uh, divots or pock marks, whatever. Those are like sap suckers. So little birds and stuff will drill those holes and then larva will go inside there and grow and then they'll come back and harvest them. This is actually not even bad for the tree. If you got like a big woodpecker. So is that the larva right there? That's just sap. That that's just, just dried sap. sap. Yeah. Sap is coming out of those okay, big trees out. you guys are cutting. It's kind of like laying towards the stump, but it'll stop it. Let's get the axe Yeah, just keep there. going. It, it, I think it's going to be fine. How did you guys identify this crack internally like that? Did you see it on you the outside? You could see on the outside. Up? She, she initially heard like a squeaking, like door hingey sound when it was really windy and came out and she saw that crack opening and closing. Oh. So she heard it and then yeah, we saw it. Nice. Sweet. Go paradise. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cool. Oh my god, it's so cool. Yeah. Oh my god. We did a bit of a notch there to really lock this in. Yes! Oh that's yeah. fantastic. I tried moving the you know the trampoline so you can kind of walk. Excellent. Perfect. Yep, I'll shove that somewhere. Oh, this is awesome. Nice. Should I, I should let the goats out and let them see it. Oh absolutely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Big and awesome these logs are. Oh, oh yeah! So it was really bad. I mean, you could take a look at the log over here. I mean, probably a really good decision to make that happen. Oh my! I knew it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't go. <laughs> They're gonna yeah. love this. Yeah, they love it. Good girls, this is your yeah. structure. We did it. Their hair they love look, it. They're like, yes. Yeah, look, their hairs are they're going working. up. They're smiling. Oh, good girls! Climb high, climb up there, girls. This is so fun. Awesome. I don't look at how happy they are. They, this is when they're smiling. They're they're like, we love it. We're gonna we love it. <laughs> look at 
You're lying. How, uh, how did you know that there was a problem with the tree? What decided to make you call us? I knew it. So I came out here and I was just feeding the goats. And remember this weekend, it was windy? Yeah. But it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it gets windy here. And this tree was making this noise that wasn't just like a cracking of a tree. It was... Like a squeaky door. Yes. Kind of, yeah. It was like a squeaky door. That's exactly yeah. what it was. There were like two pieces of wood yeah, rubbing. That's that separated wood fibers rubbing together oh, in the yeah. wind. That's what's making that squeak. So it's just like two pieces of wood rubbing together because yeah, it's separated. It like. it yeah. It wasn't like a tree branch cracking and it right, wasn't like right. that. And when I looked up, Oh my god, it was so scary. It was, it would create, make that noise, and then this, the, the two would separate, and then it would yeah, make that noise and separate. And I was, so I stood here staring at the tree for an hour, just staring at it, like, please yeah. don't fall. <laughs> so then I called you guys, and you, they even said, is this an emergency? And I, I said, I think it might be, yeah. just based on the noise. Right. It was just the noise that it made. And I saw the crack. I knew it. All the way I through. I saw all, all the crack. The way, even on the ground. All oh the way my through, God, even crack. on the ground. Yeah. And I, when I was cutting it, I could feel it like crackling and popping and stuff. When I was standing on there, like in my feet, I could feel it like. It probably was going to come down. Oh, for sure. The next, like it was. I was yeah. having a panic attack. Honestly, yeah. I was standing here panicking. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. The, everything, the neighbors yeah. here, the neighbors here. We won't I, be able to get out of the driveway. I think they're going for it. Look at that. Look at it. Oh, what? Look at that jump. This is so... <laughs> Look at this. Good I've been going to, uh, into business. This Go is awesome. Dude. Go paradise. That's what we'll call it. You have it. to have a 65-inch feeder for us to remove. And we'll, we'll make it happen. I All know. Go dreams will come true. This is what I've been dreaming about. I have to be honest. I've, dream, I've been dreaming about giant logs. Oh, really? And I've about gone out looking. But getting them here, I mean, this is, everyone's like, you get your logs. You yeah. got your logs. And it's an interesting story, too. Yeah. What's next? What's hey. next? Nice Cow job, Scott. Cows? This is the, this is the height of your career right here. I'm going to quit. <laughs> it's all downhill quit. from it's here. It's all downhill from here, man. <laughs> this doesn't get any better than that. Nice job, Kevin. You're good with the customers. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job, Charles. It's your first, second day. Nice job, John. Thank you, sir. Good job on the crane. I know you, you couldn't even see me most of the time. You got the tackle to me like over and over again. Thanks, dude. All right, that's it for this episode of Guilty Trees and at Eastside Tree Works. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you like that. I'll see you guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Scott. <laughs>